Welcome to the Romans International YouTube channel and today's video we're going to be talking about the new Range Rover. I'm going to discuss all the different variants, the different trim levels and hopefully navigate you through some of those important choices you're going to make when choosing which Range Rover to buy. Just before we get into the video, I just wanted to give you a reminder about our sister company, Elevate Finance. Um, if you are looking to finance the new Range Rover, or for that matter, any luxury or supercar, Elevate is worth getting in touch with. They're offering extremely competitive rates. It doesn't matter where you're buying from, whether it's new or used, give these guys a try. They are the absolute experts. Check out their reviews on Trustpilot. I will leave their details below, and hopefully you guys can get in touch. Okay, so one of the first choices you're gonna to wanna to make is choosing the wheelbase. So there's two different wheelbases. There's the short wheelbase, which is this car, but you also have the long wheelbase, and that is this car over here. Um, and this also determines how many seats you get in the car. Um, so for the long wheelbase, you get 200 millimeters extra length in between the wheelbase. You'll notice the, the back door is a lot longer in size. Um, but there's actually no real easy way of distinguishing between the two cars in terms of badging. There's no LWB or long like they used to be in the old generation. You used to get the little L down here on the side grille. Now says autobiography. So there's no way of distinguishing other than sort of just seeing it is a bit longer. So for the very first time on a Range Rover, only available on the long wheelbase, you get this optional seven seat configuration. And for me, it's a major part of why the long wheelbase is so appealing. And whilst you can still get a five seat long wheelbase and a four seat long wheelbase, the seven seat just makes the car incredibly practical. Um, so how it works is this second row of seating here, you just have to press this button down here and everything automatically moves forward. And voila, you have your third row of seating, the two extra seats in the back, making it a seven seater. So if I just hop in, it's actually pretty comfortable and spacious back here. Um, it's definitely not just for little kids. You can fit a couple of adults back here. Um, and they do something called sort of stadium design seating, uh, where the seats are actually quite a bit higher than the seats in front. So you do actually get good visibility when these seats come back down. So there's no doubt having seven seats in the Range Rover for a first time is a real game changer. Um, it's going to be useful, obviously, if you've got lots of kids, um, but then you've obviously got to think about kids' friends or extra family members when you've got a special occasion. You're definitely going to get use out of those seven seats. Um, and it also takes away the thing of sitting in the boot, which I'm sure a lot of kids have done. I certainly did when I was younger. If your parents were dropping you off to a party with your friends, um, two of you had to sit in the boot. Well, that problem no longer exists. Um, the, the other good thing is when the seven seats, when you're not using them, you can fold them down. They're all electrically deployable and they stash away. And it also unlocks an extra 50 millimeters of legroom for the second row, um, which is useful. You can also put the second row down as well, which just opens up an incredible amount of space on the long wheelbase in particular that almost looks like a van um, with the amount of space you've got in the back. So if you definitely don't see yourself using the seven seats, you can of course still go for the five seat configuration in the long wheelbase. The big benefit of that is you get the executive rear class seats, which give you this, the electrically deployable armrest. Um, we've seen this on the previous generation of Range Rover and it is an awesome bit of kit. Um, and on this year, you now also get this touchscreen control unit as well. Obviously you get more reclining options for the seats as well. So it is more comfortable. So you can't spec these seats if you go for the seven seat configuration. So do bear that in mind. Um, but you can spec these seats on the short wheelbase like this car. Obviously you don't quite get that extra leg room like you do on the long wheelbase. And the final seat configuration, which you can get um, is the four seat option. It's called the SV Signature Suite. It is a 15,000 pound option. And what you get for it is you basically get a full divide in between the rear seats. Um, you get a deployable champagne fridge. Um, all the divide is all beautifully veneered. Um, you also get deployable tables that come out so you can work with your laptop. And obviously look, this is for 
the ultimate luxury. It's a chauffeur car um, and it's only available on the SV long wheelbase. So it really is the absolute creme de la creme. Okay, so a few more pointers when choosing between the long wheelbase and short wheelbase. Um, what I would say is one of the advantages of the long wheelbase is I think it just offers a slightly smoother ride. And um, that's mainly because of the extra length between the axles um, just allows the suspension to just absorb a few of those bumps a bit better. Um, obviously the downside of the long wheelbase is it is a bigger car. Um, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to find a parking space. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to weave in and out of traffic. Um, but let's remember, like the short wheelbase, this still does have the, the rear axle steer, which everyone has been singing the praises of the Range Rover um, for its amazing turning circle, better than an Evoque and better than most family hatchbacks. Um, so whilst the long wheelbase isn't quite as good as the short wheelbase, in that respect, it's still better than most cars on the market. Um, if you are going off-roading, the long wheelbase is probably not the one to go for, but I don't know how many people are off-roading their Range Rovers these days. One final thing when it comes to cost, the long wheelbase is slightly more expensive uh, than the short wheelbase. Not substantially though, I think it's about £5,000 more on the lower trim levels and only two or £3,000 on the higher trim levels. Um, so not a great difference there. So it is worth noting also that the long wheelbase is not available with a couple of the engine choices, notably the P510E, which is the more powerful hybrid option. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, because um, you can get the long wheelbase on the P440E, um, but you also can't get the long wheelbase with the D300. I think that's just because it is the lowest entry point. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps you decide if you're gonna go with the long wheelbase or the short wheelbase. Okay, so now we're on to choosing the different types of engine. Um, so there are currently six different choices when it comes to choosing which engine to go for. I'm sure there'll be a few more in the future, not least the full electric version, which is due in 2024. Um, but for now, there are six and we have two diesels. Uh, you have the D350, which is on this car and this car as well. And there's also the D300. The only difference between those two diesels are the metric horsepower, the 350 versus 300. So it's extra power. Um, so the diesels are straight sixes, uh, six cylinder engines. They're mild hybrid uh, instead of plug-in hybrid. So you don't need to plug them in, um, but they give you this technology where you're sort of harvesting more energy uh, which is usually lost when you're decelerating or braking, feeding it back into the car, which is obviously better for fuel economy, reduces turbo lag. Um, but look, diesels have sort of had a bit of bad press in recent years, but these, I think, with the new technology, you know, they're very economical, and Land Rover are still offering it. You know, the likes of Porsche or Bentley have stopped diesels, but, you know, Land Rover still know it's a very popular choice, especially in the UK. Um, so with the different powers, obviously D300 um, is the entry level choice. So lacking a little bit of power for some people. I think most people are going for the D350 just for that extra oomph. Um, and yeah, still very economical choice. Plenty of torque and they're relatively quiet as well. So if you're not a fan of going for one of the diesels, there are of course other options. So there are petrol and there are plug-in hybrids. Um, so the entry level petrol is called the P400. It's a six cylinder turbo petrol. Um, the benefits of going for the petrol is because it's 400 metric horsepower. So you do get a bit more power. Personally, I think it's a bit of a sweet spot in the range. Um, so you do get, as much as the diesels are a nice, you know, quiet ride, the petrols I just think are a little bit more refined. You get a slightly silkier, smoother ride. Um, and it also has the mild hybrid technology, same as the diesels. So whilst the MPG is not as good as the diesels, it's still very good fuel economy for a car of this size. Next, you want to consider the plug-in hybrids. There's a couple of options here if you're looking to go a bit greener. 
Um, Land Rover have combined the three litre petrol engine with an electric motor and a lithium ion battery just to get that fuel economy even better. Um, they've obviously ploughed loads of R&D money into making the plug-in hybrids a lot more attractive um, and you get I think 60 miles roughly of pure electric driving um, that's going to be great for sort of short trips, city driving um, and it's obviously going to make it very economical. So Land Rover have actually stated they think the average person is going to be able to do 75% of their trips in pure electric mode um, so if you're worried about your carbon footprint these are going to make you feel a lot better about yourself. Um, obviously, you're going to want to be able to plug these in probably at home and at work uh, to make them convenient. Otherwise, you're going to get, you know, a lot of the complaints for EV drivers at the moment are queuing for public, uh, public charging points. Um, but obviously, you've got to look at your electricity bill these days as well. Um, the other big benefit of going for a hybrid is the reduction in company car tax. So you get less benefit in kinds tax. So it can make a lot of financial sense if you can put these cars through your business. So the difference between the two hybrid choices are the P440e and the P510e is obviously just more power. Um, so with the P510e, you just get more of that sort of electric instantaneous torque, you get higher top speed, you get increased towing capacity as well. So if you, if you can spend a few more quid, it is worth getting the P510e. Obviously being a hybrid, you do have that extra weight, which does affect sort of handling and performance. So just getting that extra power to make up for that will go a long way. Okay, but if performance is your priority, then you're going to want to choose this engine. This is the 4.4 litre V8, which is found in the P530. Um, and look, if you want bragging rights or you just want to feel like you've got the very best, the top of the range, and there is only one winner. Um, so the V8 this time, um, obviously sourced from BMW now, so BMW owners might be familiar with that 4.4 litre engine. Obviously this is the latest and most refined version, but you obviously get much more power. Um, you get that lovely V8 rumble, um, which is not obtrusive in, in any way on this car. It's more of a sort of velvety rumble, um, which does actually suit the sort of serenity of the interior. Um, and look, it is actually more efficient than the previous V8, um, but yeah, look, it's, it's the one to go for if you like that performance and feeling like the king of the road. Um, it is worth mentioning the P530 is currently, at the time of filming, not available to order, such was the popularity and the sort of component shortages that you can't actually order the P530, so that's only going to help with residuals going forward. So ultimately, which engine choice do I recommend? This is totally dependent on the type of driving you're gonna do. If you do frequent long journeys, then diesel's gonna be the most economical choice. So you get a lot more endurance. It's great when you fill up at the petrol station with diesel, you then see about 600 miles on your range. Um, but diesel prices are particularly high at the moment. The disparity between diesel and petrol is getting higher. Um, so petrol might end up being a better choice moving forward and I personally think the P400 is a real sweet spot in the range so I definitely would recommend that. So if you're doing lots of short journeys in town, the plug-in hybrids are going to make a lot of sense. Um, just make sure they are being plugged in because what you don't want is all that extra weight from the plug-in hybrid and not actually utilizing the hybrid technology. Um, obviously if you just want the best of the best, the ultimate performance, then the 4.4 litre V8 is going to make you feel like the daddy. Okay, so you've chosen your wheelbase, you've chosen your engine type, now it's on to choosing your trim level. Um, so there are currently four different trim levels you can choose from. You have the SE, the HSE, the Autobiography, and the SV. There was also something called the first edition, which I'll show you in a bit. That ran for the first year of production, but that is now unavailable to order. I'm sure there'll be a few more editions later down the line, but for now, we have those four. So let me go through them as best I can. Okay, so the entry level trim is called the SE. Obviously, this is at the most attractive price point. So if you just want a new Range Rover and you're not really fussed about 
all the bells and whistles and you just want to keep the cost down to a minimum, the SE is going to be your best bet. The good thing is all the Range Rovers come with heaps of standard equipment, so you're not going to feel short change with the SE. You're still going to get a fixed panoramic roof, get options like surround cameras, adaptive cruise control, Meridian sound system, soft closed doors, and all of the Range Rovers come with that rear axle steering. And so many people will not feel the need to get anything over and above the SE, and I think that's totally understandable. Um, what I would say though, is the SE does come with some rather boring looking wheels as standard, so you might want to upgrade those. But really, from the outside of the car, it's actually quite hard to distinguish between an SE and an autobiography. And, you know, we sold quite a few SEs and they do seem very popular. So one up from the SE, you have the HSE, and that's what we have here. Um, so the HSC name was actually used on the old generation Range Rover, but on the, only on the Range Rover Sport, at least in the UK. So now we have it on the bigger Range Rover. Um, it costs about £5,000 more than the SE. You just get a load more equipment. Um, so instead of 21 inch wheels, you get 22s. These are actually the 23s, so they've been upgraded. And then on the inside, which is where most of the extra equipment is, you get semi-aniline leather instead of Windsor leather, that's nice and softer. Um, you also get head-up display, you get ventilated seats, you get park assist where the car can basically park itself for you. And the one I really like is the clear sight rear view mirror. Um, so you actually get a camera on the back which projects a live feed onto your rear view mirror. Just gives you much better visibility. Um, so look, for the roughly the £5,000, I personally think it's definitely worth getting the HSE over the SE. It's also quite nice to know you haven't got the entry level model. So one level up from the HSE, you get the autobiography, which is what we have here on our long wheelbase. So the autobiography name has been around on Range Rovers for what seems like forever. Um, and whilst it's no longer the flagship trim level, it still screams luxury and refinement. It's definitely very opulent. Um, so it costs about 15,000 pounds more than the HSE. Um, again, you just get loads more equipment on the car. Um, you get 22 inch diamond cat alloys. Obviously this car again has been upgraded to the 23s, which seems to be what a lot of people are doing. Um, inside, you get the Meridian 3D surround system instead of the regular system. Uh, you get the 24-way seats instead of the 20-way seats, which also gives you the electric rear executive pack. That gives you the electric deployable armrest, um, which is normally a £5,000 option. Um, and there's loads more leather, there's more safety tech, there's more loading capabilities. Um, so look, all in all, um, is it worth the £15,000? You'll have to decide for yourself. Obviously, bragging rights play a part. I mean, a lot of our clients won't even consider the lower trim levels. They just want the autobiography. Now, where Land Rover have been a little bit clever about this is for the more powerful engines, the P510e and the P530, they don't actually allow you to spec the SE or the HSE. You have to get an autobiography or the level above the SV. Um, obviously, prices then significantly jump up. But look, the autobiography for the elite clientele, I think they're gonna be very satisfied. Okay, so now on to the first edition, um, which is no longer available to order because it only run for the first year of production. That's now coming to an end, so you won't be able to configure one of these currently. Um, but basically what it is, is it's a, a special edition with lots of extras included as standard, much like an autobiography with a few more add-ons. Um, so you get things like the rear entertainment system included as standard on a first edition, normally about a three and a half thousand pound option. You also get the Meridian signature surround sound, that's 34 speakers, one subwoofer. Um, you also get speakers in the headrest with active noise cancelling, so you get a really immersive sound experience, which is pretty amazing. And then you also get back here, the event suite seating, um, which obviously this all stashes down in the boot and you can bring it out and get these cushions. So when you're watching your son or your daughter play on the sports day, you can have a nice glass of pims and sit back here. You even get two extra speakers in the tailgate. But overall, the first edition only cost four or 5,000 pound more than an autobiography, but because of exclusivity, it's got a few little badges inside as well. You will tend to see their hold a premium above that. 
Okay, so now where I think things start to get a little bit silly, um, but for the man or woman willing to spend whatever it takes to get the very top of the range, Range Rover, there is this, the SV, which is the new flagship. Um, where things are a little bit confusing is on the previous generation of Range Rover, you had the SVA or the SV Autobiography. This was kind of like a variant in its own right. It was like a high performance version of the Range Rover with more power, uh, different suspension setup, um, which is quite different to what the SV is now in this new generation because it's basically just a trim level. So, you know, it's available on the different engine types. It's on the D350, it's on the P510E and the P530. Um, and what it is, is it's instead of performance, they've just cranked up luxury to a whole another level, uh, used lots of different types of material, cranked up the personalization and the bespoke materials used. So one of the things is they've made a unique front bumper and front grille for the SV, um, which feels different. You get that sort of mirrored finish um, and new design. It does feel a bit more high-end and classy. Um, you also get this sort of like mirrored side grille here, which you can literally look in and see yourself. You also get the little SV badging below. Um, on the SV, you also get a unique range of alloys. These are 23 inch, I think they're called Style 1077. Obviously you can get those in different finishes as well, but I do think they look better than the other ones. Um, you also get the very nice big white badge on the back, the new badge saying SV, so everyone can see you are driving the top of the range. And on the inside, there are also plenty of little nice touches and tweaks just to make it feel a little bit more unique. Um, there's a choice of different veneers for the wood, um, sustainably sourced woods apparently. Um, definitely you get better leather, that's called near aniline leather instead of semi aniline leather. Um, but there are also a couple of different themes. You get the intrepid theme, which is what this car has black ceramic controls, also much more stealthy exterior. There's also something called the Serenity theme where it's more bronze and a bit more bling looking and white ceramics inside. Um, but you can really personalize the SV to how you want. In the back, they use this new sort of fabric, it's called Ultra Fabric. Again, they're going with this sort of eco thing, non-leather. Um, personally, I'm not actually a massive fan of how it looks. I don't actually think it looks that high end. Um, but also the other thing I don't like about the SV is the speakers, is even though it's got the signature surround sound like the first edition had, uh, but the speakers, the grills are just not as premium looking as the first edition. Not sure exactly why that is. Um, but other than that, one thing you can select on the SV is you can get the bigger rear entertainment. So it's the biggest rear entertainment screens they've ever had on a Range Rover. I think they're 13.1 inches compared to 11.4 they normally have. And obviously the other thing I mentioned previously was the SV signature suite where you can turn it into a four seat back here when you get the long wheelbase SV. That's where things get really, really expensive. But on the SV, the thing about it, as much as it's great to have that top of the range, I do feel like Land Rover having taken you to the cleaners a little bit on the price because it's a 25 to 30 grand jump up from the autobiography or the first edition. And where things get even more silly is on the long wheelbase SV, they jump up another 20,000 pounds. So, you know, I mentioned previously in the video about how the, how the long wheelbase was only about 5,000 pounds or even less than that, more than a short wheelbase. But when you could choose the SV, they crank it up by 20,000 pounds. So I do feel like Land Rover or, you know, having you on a little bit. Okay, so that should cover pretty much all the different variants and trim levels. Hopefully help you make the right choice for which new Range Rover you want to get. There are just a few other options I thought it worth pointing out. Obviously, if you've gone for one of the lower trim levels like the SE, there are loads of different options you can get. Whereas on the Autobiography and the SE, that comes with most things as standard. But there are a few things that aren't included. Um, so something on the Autobiographies and the other trim levels, you get something called the Shadow Exterior Pack. That basically blacks out the side grille, blacks out the front grille. Seems to be a very popular thing. Um, you can obviously get accessories like the deployable side steps. They're about three grand. See, some people really like those. Electric deployable tow bar, obviously very useful for some people. And on the executive rear seats, you can actually upgrade those even further with the Comfort, um, which gives you hot stone massage instead of the, just a regular massage. And if you go for the Comfort Plus, you even get heated calf rests and heated heel catches. 
So just make sure you get those warm heels. Uh, but uh, that is it. You know, this new Range Rover is such an incredible car. It's so popular. The demand is off the scale. Um, you know, if you're looking to sell one, we'd love to buy it. And if you're looking to buy one, I hope this video has been very helpful. If it has, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again next time.